Hey team, Dr. Jay Cordy here, and in my previous videos, I've been rattling on about this idea that all statistical tests are linear models. So t-tests, ANOVAs, um, ANCOVAs, multiple regressions, linear regressions, even seemingly non-linear models like quadratic models are in fact just linear models. And uh, I've, I've sort of read on about it without even proving it to you or showing any evidence that that's true. And so in this video, I'm finally going to demonstrate to you that all models are linear models. So um, let's jump into it. I think it's a, such an important lesson because often people get hung up on should I do a t-test should I do a one-way and over should I do a two-way and over all these kinds of questions when really it's irrelevant we should apply a statistical model that's appropriate and see whether it explains a significant amount of variation or not bada bing bada boom that's what we should be thinking about we shouldn't be thinking about is it right to do a two-way test here um, because really it is again just a linear model now how am I going to prove this to you? Well, uh, let's go back, and you know, I know I've covered this before, but I, I've got to reiterate it, right? We need to bound our knowledge on philosophy, and we, to understand statistics, we need to understand what the heck we're doing when we run statistics or do science in general. This is my man, Karl Popper. He described what a good biological theory was. It's a theory that makes predictions. A good biological theory makes predictions, and therefore it is falsifiable. If you make a prediction that doesn't come true, your theory has been falsified falsified. Um, predictions should be useful, tell us about how the world should behave, and the more specific the prediction, the more useful the theory is, and the more falsifiable the theory is, right? So, STATS is a statistical process about making predictions, right? So, a statistical model is a mathematical process which attempts to describe the population from which your sample that you analyzed came from which allows us to make predictions about future samples right so when Pfizer sampled over 40,000 people to give the Pfizer vaccine and 40,000 people to give the placebo they then ran statistical tests to predict what would happen if we gave it to a different sample more people than 40,000 perhaps millions of people um, and so the statistical models were about making predictions of the future Future people that get the vaccine for example so in light of that is a mean a statistical model here we've got height of big height and Bigfoot is the population so uh, a mean uh, is a statistical model is it yes a mean is a statistical model what is it telling us what is it trying to predict well it's trying to predict the expected value what would you expect to get if you sampled a single Bigfoot what would you get on average if you sampled a bunch of Bigfoots this is what a mean is trying to predict it's trying to tell you what the mean of the population is and it's using the mean of the sample to make that estimate now I'm going through all of this to try and explain to you to try to prove to you that a linear model will come up with the same predictions as something like a t-test or an ANOVA. They will come up with the same predicted values, right? They will also have the same degrees of freedom and they will come up with the same p-value. Why is that? Because they're the same thing. A t-test, an ANOVA, they are linear models. So to prove it to you, I'm going to show you that they perform the same function by making the same predictions. So I told you how to make a prediction of a small group, and that's by using the mean. But what do you do for a linear regression? Well, you got to think back to when you were 13 on the formula of a line. Um, it's y equals mx plus c. That's when you were 13. That's what you were taught. Statisticians flip that. So that c becomes this beta 0. That m becomes that beta 1. And this is how a statistician would write out that formula. It's exactly the same. It's just this is probably the one you're more familiar with. And this is the one statisticians like to use so these formulas describe this line modeling the knowledge of immunology against coolness and you can see that there's a strong positive relationship there this is real data i promise you so um, if your knowledge let's try and make a prediction let's use the statistical model to make a prediction about future samples if your knowledge of immunology is uh, or was zero what is the predicted coolness so you plug that zero into this formula over here i've now uh, filled in the letters with the numbers that actually describe the line there so it's y equals 2x plus 1 or y equals 1 plus 2x those are the same thing this is just how a statistician would write it so now when we 
plug in the zero into the formula, we get the coolness rating of one. So this is now, if you were to come across a new person that has zero knowledge of immunology, you should pity them. And you should also know that their predicted coolness is one out of 10, I assume. So what if your knowledge of immunology was 10 out of 10? What is the predicted coolness? So you plug that back into the formula. This time I'm just showing you the statistician's way of doing it. Y equals one plus plus two times 10, and we end up with 21. So your coolness level is 21 out of 10 if you have 10 out of 10 immunology knowledge. So this is a predicted value for if you came across someone with 10 out of 10 immunology knowledge, um, like people I know, um, uh, you could predict their coolness, right? So let's now compare apples with apples. Let's try run a linear model on this after we've run a t-test. So here we go. We've got snot production on the y-axis. I'm assuming that's in maybe mils, hopefully not liters. Um, and here we have placebo and here we have pollen. So we've given our samples a sniff of pollen to see if that bumps up the snot production. Now let's run what a regular first year statistician lecturer might tell you to run. Let's run a t-test. To do that, you need the mean of this, you need the mean of that. Now, these are the predicted values of any future sample, mean two, uh, the mean equals two and the mean equals four. That's the statistical model, and those are the predicted values there. So means are the statistical model, and they are also the predicted value. So now let's run down a stats breakdown on these two. So we've got eight degrees of freedom in the data, and that's because we've got eight points here that could take on any theoretical value. They could float around wherever they like, so we have eight degrees of freedom in the data. Now we have two in the model, because this mean and this mean are numerical values. They occupy a cell in an Excel spreadsheet, for example, and so they could take on any value. So now that we've got two degrees of freedom in our model, we had to subtract that from our data data because and we end up with um, six degrees of freedom in our data if you don't understand why that happened make sure you go back and watch the previous video essentially once you know the mean and you know these three data points this data point must be that value in order to make the mean four it's not free to vary because you know something about the data Right, and if we run the t-test p-value, we get 0 0.036. So that's the p-value of the t-test of this data. Bada bing, bada boom, that's done. That's what you would. That's what the average first year uh, stats lecturer would tell you. That's what you know. Stats 101 is. You got two groups. You run a t-test. I'm telling you, you don't need to worry about that because everything is a linear model. How do you turn this into a linear model? Well, let's imagine that the placebo group, we give the value of zero, and the pollen group, we give the value of one. Now that's literally in your data set. If you wanted to, you could go zero, 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 one, 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 and then you could have in the next column your dependent variable, right? Zeros and one, and we've still got snot production. This is the exact same data. Now let's run a linear regression through it. There we go. We've run a nice little linear regression through that. Um, now the formula of this linear regression, y equals mx plus c, or the way the statisticians write it, y equals beta 0 plus beta 1x. Now let's plug in some values. This is the actual gradient of the line there is 2. The gradient of the line is 2, so the m has become 2, or the beta 1 has become 2. And the intercept is also 2. We can see it intercepts the line, so the constant there is also 2. So that's 2 there. Now, what is the predictive value of the placebo? Now, remember, we've given the placebo the numerical value of 0. So now we can plug that into our formula. So y equals 2 plus 2 times 0. The predictive value is 2. Two. So if you're in the placebo group, the predictive value is two. Uh, what, if the predictive, what is the predictive value of pollen? Remember, we've given that the numerical value of one. We plug that into our formula and we get our predictive value of four. So right there, the value is four. And remember, this is all due to this formula here, two plus two X. So now let's do a stats break data breakdown. 
Now, uh, we've got eight degrees of freedom in the data because we've got eight points again. Now, a degrees of freedom in the model. How many degrees of freedom have been used up in the model? Well, there's two numerical values in this formula. We've got beta zero and we've got beta one. Both of those values were two, but they were free to vary and they occupy an Excel spreadsheet. So we've used up two degrees of freedom in our model. So the degrees of freedom goes back down to six. There's only six ways that that data could vary given this linear regression and then we run an f test of this linear regression remember an f test looks at explained versus unexplained variation looks at that ratio of um, uh, unexplained versus explained variation there and we get this p-value which is exactly the same so if we break that down t-test expected values we get the exact same the placebo 2 the pollen 2 the uh, sorry, the placebo 2, placebo 2, pollen 4, pollen 4. And remember, all we had to do to do that was give the placebo the numerical value of 0 and the pollen the numerical value of 1. Degrees of freedom of the data was 6 in both groups. Degrees of freedom of the model was 2. So that's the degrees of freedom of the data after we've run our stats models of the linear model and the t-test. And the p-values were identical. I rest my case. Now, you might ask, well, hold on a minute. What about uh, more than one group? You can't run a line through more than one group. Um, and again, it does get a little complicated, but essentially you run two linear regressions through it um, and you look at how uh, the slope of each one of those compared to the control group to get to one group and to get to the next group it's complicated but it works out exactly the same um, and numerically it's the same and statistically you'd code it in the data exactly the same and it all works out to be exactly the same Right, now we're actually going to do some stats. So in the next video, I jump into Jamobi and we're going to actually run through some stats with some example data. So if you want to join in, make sure you download Jamobi and then you can follow along with the video. Thanks team.